Hello everyone, I'm Jackie Ko, Senior Cloud Architect in Emerging Technologies. Before joining AWS, I co-founded a technology startup after receiving my MBA. I went through the internet boom and Web 2.0, then the cloud and AI revolution. I started my quantum journey in 2017, exploring the business potentials of the quantum technology. Hi everybody, my name is Dilan Rajasigam, and my focus is on helping customers use technology, especially emerging technology. And as such, I will be conducting a fireside chat with Brendan Hopper, CIO of technology from CBA. And today we're gonna to talk about quantum computing, in particular, CBA's experience with quantum computing and also how you can get started. Thank you, Dilan. In AWS Summit ANZ 2021, I presented the session Quantum Computing from Zero to Hero with Amazon Bracket to elevate the general understanding of quantum computing from a technology perspective. In this AWS Summit, I'm going to talk about quantum technology in the business context and how your business can benefit from quantum computing using Amazon Bracket. Quantum computing is a whole new way of processing information. There are some complex problems that would take a classical supercomputer very long time to solve. However, by harnessing some unusual properties in quantum phenomena, a quantum computer may be able to help solve those problems in a reasonably short time. That said, building a quantum computer is not an easy task, as quantum devices are very sensitive to influence from its environment or noise and building a fault-tolerant quantum computer is a big challenge in science and technology. Although we have very fast supercomputers these days, there are some problems that we can solve only at a small scale. As the problem size grows, classical computers would take exponentially long time to solve. For example, optimizing a financial portfolio with an increasingly large number of investments finding out the best shipping route with increasingly many stops, or simulating increasingly large molecules to discover new drugs and materials. This is where a quantum computer may be able to help. A quantum computer is not a faster classical computer. Quantum computers follow a different mathematical model and therefore require a different type of algorithms. Many of these quantum algorithms have been shown in theory to scale better than classical algorithms when the problem size grows. In this illustration, when the problem size is small, a quantum computer is not faster than a classical supercomputer. However, for a large problem size, a quantum computer could provide a significant speed up. The quantum computers available today are not yet able to outperform a classical alternative, but they are getting very close. As the technology matures, we expect a commercial quantum advantage will open a new frontier of computing to help us solve problems that are too computationally complex to solve on a classical computer in a practical time. In order to achieve quantum advantage, the scientific community and leading industrial R&D teams are investing in quantum computing capability, their people and know-how, to position for the time when quantum computing provides a performance advantage. We are seeing new discoveries at an increasing pace and we believe it is the right time for your organization to explore how quantum computing can benefit your business and what you may do to get quantum ready when the technology matures one day. Research over last decades have shown that quantum computing can be a potential game changer across several vastly different application areas, such as in machine learning, allowing the CPU to offload complex calculation to a QPU or quantum processing unit. In optimization, for example, think of the large-scale multivariable optimization problems such as scheduling, routing, and balancing. This is very useful in network optimization for airlines, taxis, supply chains, and logistics. In science and technology, many problems are in fact quantum mechanical in nature such as computational chemistry and material science. A quantum computer operates on the very laws that these systems follow at a molecular level and can help discover new drugs and industrial materials at scale. Some businesses are trying out various use cases using the quantum devices that we have available today, 
These are scaled down experiments that help us understand the types of trade-offs and improvements that are needed to build better quantum computing systems. When quantum computers do deliver advantage over classical computers, these businesses will have the expertise and capability to scale the proof of concept solutions to solve real world problems and benefit from the progress in quantum technologies. So how can AWS help you to start your quantum journey? These are the three pillars of Amazon quantum computing ecosystem. Amazon Bracket democratizes quantum computing so you can access state-of-the-art technologies to explore and experiment with quantum computing. Amazon Quantum Solutions Lab is a team of quantum computer experts to provide you cross-discipline support so you can build expertise and collaborate on relevant research projects. AWS Center for Quantum Computing is an academic research institute to conduct original research on quantum software and hardware. Let me talk about these three pillars in more details. At AWS, we're excited about the potential of the quantum computing technology and appreciate the technological and scientific challenges. We are bringing together the world's leading quantum computing researchers and engineers to embark on a journey to build a fault-tolerant quantum computer. This is the AWS Center for Quantum Computing close to the California Institute of Technology, Caltech. We encourage you to take a look at our blog for more details about the hardware that we are developing at the AWS Center for Quantum Computing. I'll share the blog link at the end of this session. Amazon Quantum Solutions Lab is a customer-facing collaborative research program. You can work with leading experts in quantum computing, machine learning, and high-performance computing to identify the most promising applications of quantum computing for your business to get quantum ready. Amazon Bracket is a fully managed service that makes it easy to get started with quantum computing. We provide a fully managed development environment based on Jupyter Notebooks that come pre-installed with a suite of software tools, including the Amazon Bracket SDK, which is a hardware agnostic programming framework for quantum computing that allows you to access different quantum computing technologies with the same programming experience to design your quantum algorithms, also called quantum circuits. You may test and fine-tune your algorithms on our fully managed circuit simulators that are parallelizable, cost-effective, and always available. To run your quantum circuits on a real quantum computer, we provide secure on-demand access to a range of quantum computer hardware for you to run your circuits after testing them on the quantum simulators so you can experience how your design will behave in a real quantum device. You can start the Amazon Bracket quickly on the Amazon Bracket console to create a fully managed Jupyter notebook that comes with quantum circuits examples. Or you can install the Bracket SDK in your own local development environment without connecting to AWS. Amazon Bracket provides managed simulators for you to debug and test your code. You can then run the same code on a real quantum device by changing the device ARM or Amazon resource name, which is one line of code. All of this is fully integrated into AWS to provide user access management, security, logging, monitoring, and more, so you can manage your resources like with any other service on AWS. Today, we provide access to quantum computers from D-Wave Systems, INQ, Rigetti, and Oxford Quantum Circuits, or OQCs. The recent addition of OQC's Lucy and AQBIC QPU based on superconducting technology expands the Amazon Bracket service into first European region. We will soon introduce QERA's quantum computer to Amazon Bracket, a QPU based on Rydberg Atom technology, which is a different quantum computing paradigm called Analog Hamiltonian Simulation, or AHS. Already today, Researchers in academia are using such special purpose devices to study quantum mechanical phenomena and fundamental physics models that would otherwise be hard to simulate on classical computers. We're excited to soon bring the AHS technology to customers of Amazon Bracket when we launch the QERA device in 2022. Our goal 
is to bring AHS out of the lab and into the hands of scientists around the world to accelerate research into important questions that will grow the understanding of the fascinating and powerful field of quantum physics. In the fullness of time, you can expect that we will support different types of quantum computing technologies on Amazon Bracket. We provide three managed simulators, the State Vector Simulator S3-1, the Tensor Network Simulator TN-1, and the DM-1 Noise Simulator. DM-1 allows you to experiment how noise in quantum devices can affect your algorithm's performance and accuracy before running it on real quantum hardware. All fully managed simulators automatically scale AWS compute resources to deliver high performance execution of your quantum algorithms. Amazon Bracket is part of AWS free tier, which gives you one free hour of a quantum circuit simulation time per month during the first 12 months. This applies to simulation time on SV1, TN1, DM1, or any combination of those three managed simulations. I now pass to Delan, who will talk about Amazon Quantum Computing customer stories. So hey, Brendan, how's it going? Good, thanks, Delan. How are you? Good, thanks, man. So can you tell us a bit about your role at CBA? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm the CIO for technology, which uh, means I look after the group's engineering practice. I also look after our technology strategy uh, and our innovation and emerging tech function. Nice. Emerging technology is really important, particularly for a bank, to stay ahead of things, be ahead of the game. And CBA has been a keen supporter of emerging technology, including quantum computing. But why? We've had an innovation in emerging technology function for almost a decade now. And we've got about 25 people who are really just dedicated to emerging tech and running experiments. Uh, and we've We've structured them and designed that team so that they're largely self-contained. There's about 25 people who are, including designers, engineers, architects, product managers, who run experiments and who look at like what tech is available right now, what's just around the corner, and what's even longer out, like 10, 20 years out, that we need to be getting ready for and taking advantage of. And the reason we do that is two things. First of all, our customers' expectations and what, what, what our customers deserve from a bank has changed over the last few years. And they're now like really demanding the best digital experiences and we want to provide that. And technology is just a really important part of how we do that. And staying on the cutting edge, constantly experimenting, that just means we can deliver those value propositions. Secondly, uh, the whole process of just constantly running experiments, challenging our own teams from within, uh, taking those moon shots, those roof shots, uh, just means that we challenge the way we think and that leads to the whole bank and the whole technology department thinking differently about what we do and how we build it. Awesome. And moonshots are really important, but also universities are as well. And we know that you guys have been involved a lot with universities, but why would a bank do that? Well, uh, once again, two reasons, right? So first of all, when Australia does well, CBA does well. And we really see that you know, we've got an obligation to make sure that Australia does well. And in the technology department, we interpret that and we see that as making sure Australia has a really thriving, vibrant tech community and the tech skills it needs. And we're one of Australia's biggest employers of tech talent. This year alone, we're hiring an additional 600 software engineers. Over the next three years, we're looking for about 200 data scientists and we're always recruiting cyber people. If we can find the right cyber people, we'll just hire and hire. Uh, so we, we have a role to play in producing that pipeline for ourselves and for others. Uh, secondly, it's just good for our staff to be involved that way. And we, we partner quite deep with universities, right? So we don't just hire from universities. We go and teach courses. We go and shoot up. We give them advices on their curriculum. And we, we just work with them really closely to make sure that they're creating the skills Australia needs, but also to, to make sure that like uh, our staff uh, get a lot of personal engagement and experience from that and we're just happy to be a part of it. No, awesome. That ecosystem approach, having business work with academia to build a better ecosystem for Australia is really, really important. But more specifically, what's your involvement in quantum computing? Yeah, thanks. So uh, first of all, in 2017, like with the founding of Silicon Quantum Computing, SQC, uh, 
we, we took a stake in that and we sit on their board and we're very heavily invested in SQC, like financially, but more importantly, their mission. Uh, SQC are based at UNSW, who we have a strong partnership with, and they're really specialists and they're actually becoming global leaders in quantum computers that are based on silicon. And a lot of quantum computers are, uh, they use like superconductors and rarer materials. We think that one of the advantages of silicon is that the, you know, the, the semiconductor industry and the processor companies, they're just much better at scaling silicon. They've been doing it for 60 years now. And so we think that that gives silicon an edge. And we also just have been impressed and continue to be really impressed by the team they've got there. Yeah, awesome. SQC, Silicon Quantum Computing, an Australian startup backed by both financial institutions, telecommunications and government, an excellent opportunity to build that ecosystem. But thinking specifically about use cases, what use cases will quantum computing solve for you? And what is the customer benefit? Yeah, so the, the, I guess there's three categories of use cases where quantum probably will be game changing for banking and financial services over the next couple of decades. The first one is just deep learning and machine learning. And there's a, there's a number of problems and a number of problem spaces like big data and AI where quantum computing will just be a step change in how effective the algorithms are. And we use, we use big data and AI to power our benefits finder where we recommend customers like ways they can save money or how they can manage their finances better. Uh, AI drives our personalization engine because not everyone wants the same banking experience. So over the next couple of decades, quantum's really gonna unlock a bunch of those benefits. Second of all, we use big data and AI to power our fraud protection and our security services and cybersecurity. And once again, like we think quantum computing could really take that to the next level in helping our customers stay safe online and also just protecting their finances and accounts. Uh, finally, we've, we've explored and we're continuing to explore like financial services specific use cases. And uh, a couple of years ago, we did an experiment with a partner called Regetti into like a portfolio management optimization. Interesting, portfolio management optimization. When we think about quantum computing and we think about optimization, the markets business is one area that we tend to go to. Why don't you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, sure. And I guess like a lot of your viewers won't work in financial services or banking. So like portfolio optimization is effectively just looking at what assets you could hold as a collective and working out like what combination of those will be the best investment. And obviously like a very important problem space if you can get it right. And so in 2019, we partnered with Regetti and we ran two experiments on quantum algorithms uh, on a quantum simulator. So the logic that we think would have quantum computer would have, but not the hardware because it wasn't ready yet. Uh, and, and actually that experiment showed that quantum computers uh, definitely uh, have potential in, in that problem space of portfolio optimization. And as the hardware comes online over the next few years, we're going to continue to experiment and see what we can do. Amazing. I think uh, you also published a paper on that and leading the, leading the industry also in terms of sharing knowledge which is amazing. So if we think about your journey, it's been intensive, it's been multi-year, it's been both investment and experimentation. What have been your biggest learnings? Uh, first of all, like I remember in I think 2018 when I first met Michelle Simmons, who's now the, the CEO of SQC, uh, she did a talk on like, I think that was several years into a 40 year roadmap. And then I've sort of seen that talk every year now for the last five years. And it's just amazing looking at that team's persistence and like sometimes they'll fall slightly behind, then they'll catch up and they'll get slightly ahead. But just the ability and the persistence and what it takes to execute on like a 40 year roadmap, the, the persistence there has really changed how I think about uh, all sorts of things and how I just think on a longer time horizon. Uh, and, and being there with those people, like sitting down with Michelle and the, the SQC team, it's very strange. It feels like you're just sitting with giants who are going to change the world. It's, it's quite awe-inspiring. One of the lessons I've learned from them as well is that, and why we think that they're going to actually be a world leader at quantum, particularly in the silicon space, is that they've taken a little bit of a different approach to a lot of other quantum companies. And a lot of other quantum computing companies have raced to kind of hit numbers and to get metrics and to get a certain level of 
uh, performance out of their computers. Whereas Michelle and SQC, they're really focused on the foundational elements of their platform right and eliminating their tech debt as they go. And just they, they learned very early on that taking shortcuts in quantum computing doesn't pay off in the long term. And so I think one of the lessons I've learned is like to be very appreciative of how much you can achieve when you're just relentless about not allowing tech debt. Mm. Finally, uh, the last thing that I've learned and the thing I'd like to share is just how big the quantum ecosystem is and how many different layers of companies and organizations are needed to actually have a quantum ecosystem. And when I first looked at quantum computing, I sort of thought that all the companies were competing with each other. And actually what you find out is, you know, you've got, you've got materials producers and you've got people and companies who produce particular uh, materials like with SQC, some of that's like zero spin silicon. Uh, and then on top of that, you've got the physicists and the people who are actually running the experiments to build the chips. And then you've got the manufacturing companies who look to scale those chips out, something that can actually be used in a computer. On top of that, you've got systems developers who are working out like what the operating system equivalent would be for a, a quantum computing, uh, like a quantum computer. And then finally, you've got the people developing algorithms on top of that. And then once you have all those layers and all those companies and all those people involved, only then do you get industry and academia being able to really start exploring on top of that whole stack what value you could add and what we could do, how we could use the technology for our customers. And like, we think it's really important that Australia develops a full quantum ecosystem and has all those components. And actually we're in a really good spot. Amazing. Um, when I think through those lessons learnt, and it's really interesting to see an emerging technology where everyone's so cooperative, you know, and um, Australia in particular has the potential to lead the world in this area. What advice would you give an organisation that's just starting and just wants to begin investing or experimenting with quantum computing? Great question, and I, and I agree. Like, it's, it's amazing how much they cooperate. When you deal with people in the quantum industry, it's just, they're all so focused on producing the technology and getting the outcomes. They're, they're no longer really competing uh, with each other. They're kind of competing with nature mm. to make it work. Uh, first of all, I mean, like, number one, four years ago, I thought maybe quantum was a, a science problem. Like, people were working out whether we'd have one day have quantum computers. I'm now totally convinced that it's definitely going to happen. It's now an engineering problem. Like over the next decade or two, how do we scale them out so they're usable? But first of all, like quantum computing is definitely going to happen, so get ready. And what getting ready means is if you wanna make use of quantum when it comes to AI, get all your data sorted, make sure that you can use conventional algorithms on it because that's a prerequisite to being able to use quantum algorithms. The next thing is for larger companies, companies who have like emerging technology or innovation functions, I think it's important that you start looking at the tech and doing like a sector, like a breakdown of your sector for both the risks and the opportunities that quantum uh, can provide mm. and get ahead of it. And then finally, like experiment early. And that's why like, you know, we're here launching AWS Bracket or talking about AWS Bracket. It's an exact idea of what a company should be looking at doing. It's just starting to use that kind of tech that's out there, run experiments, get ready. Yeah, nice. I think it's really, really important experimentation drive to drive strategy, particularly in areas which are forming. Yeah. Right? But what's next for you guys? Well, CBA's next step when it comes to quantum computing is we're going to continue experimenting. We're also going to be one of the first uh, participants of the SQC's end user pilot, which means we'll have a hardware, a dedicated fridge and a dedicated quantum computer for us to start running financial use cases on in the next few years. Uh, more generally, like on the technology front and on the partnership with universities front, we're expanding our workforce across Australia. Like our tech workforce historically was very much Sydney centric and based in New South Wales. We've just launched a new premises in Lot 14 in Adelaide's Innovation Precinct. Wow. We're opening a tech hub in Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth. So we're spreading our people across Australia and we're hiring quite heavily. And as part of that, we want to make sure that we're partnering with industry, with academia, uh, and wherever we can to help Australia like become a tech nation. Awesome. I think uh, <clears throat> looking to expand and include all of Australia, particularly in something like quantum computing or technology in general, 
is really, really important. Thank you very much, Brendan, for joining me today. It was an awesome conversation and look forward to picking it up next year. Me too, Delana. It was a pleasure being here and thanks for having me. Quantum computing is growing globally. The promise of the technology is immense. In 2021, venture capital investment deals were over a billion US dollars, up from 187 million in 2019. China has invested over 15 billion and the EU over 7 billion in public money. McKinsey have estimated that use cases in pharmaceuticals, chemical, automotive and finance alone could top between 300 and 700 billion dollars in value. Quantum computing is here to stay. Quantum computing will make a significant difference to the way we approach the world. Quantum computing is a technology that's worth looking into. Emerging technology, being educated and appraised of what is coming is never a waste of time. Preparing for an increasingly digital future is never a waste of time. But understanding is not enough. Experimentation is key to unlocking value. But don't do it in a silo. Don't do it piecemeal. Have a plan to change your approach, to change your focus as a technology evolves. As you've heard, we here at Amazon are investing in quantum computing for the long term. Our customers are leading the way with quantum computing experimentation on Amazon Bracket using simulated and real early stage quantum computers. The new use cases our customers are exploring transcend quantum and classical hardware, such as Shor's algorithm that can break certain types of encryption. We have the AWS Quantum Solutions Lab to aid customers in quantum strategy and experimentation and the Center for Quantum Computing to further research. But don't wait, start today. Over to you, Jackie. Thank you, Dilan. We at Amazon are keen to help you get started with Amazon Bracket. If you are a builder, you may download the Amazon Bracket SDK from GitHub to start building quantum circuits and test them on the local simulator. When you're ready to scale up your quantum algorithms using our fully managed quantum simulators, we offer one hour of free simulation time per month for the first 12 months after you sign up with Amazon Bracket. For graduate students, research institutions, and their staff, we offer AWS Public Sector Cloud Credit for research program to support researchers who want to build cloud-hosted applications for their research, to evaluate the efficacy of moving research workloads to the cloud, or to train a broader community via workshops or tutorials. The best way to learn is by doing. Amazon Quantum Solutions Lab will help you with your quantum journey from a small proof of concept to specific use cases. You can get started building quantum-inspired solutions that could be directly applied to big-scale problems once the quantum hardware is ready, building your team's expertise in the meantime. There are some useful resources I'm sharing here. The GitHub link for the Amazon Bracket SDK and examples. The AWS Public Sector Cloud Credit for Research Program Application Process. The AWS Quantum Computing Blog for the latest update on Amazon Quantum Computing. In my AWS Summit ANZ 2021 presentation on the technology aspect of quantum computing and Amazon Bracket. In summary, Amazon Bracket is available now so you can explore and experiment with quantum computing. Amazon Quantum Solutions Lab is here for you to get expert advice, collaborate with your research team, and identify potential use cases. We believe that it is the right time to start experimenting and gain understanding of the value that quantum technology can bring to your business, building expertise and intellectual property along the way, so you will become quantum ready when the technology matures. To continue your cloud journey, Please use these training resources. Scan one or both of the QR codes on the screen and get started with your cloud skills training and certification. We really value your feedback to help us improve our sessions, so please share your rating. Thank you for attending Explore Quantum Computing for Business using Amazon Bracket. <laughs>